You know the deal. While everybody is losing their minds thinking that the market's going to crash, drop down to 10k, 4k, jacking themselves off to low price predictions, I'm here to remind you guys about some of the facts. And I want to start this off by just talking about what Bitcoin has been doing on the short term time frame. As usual, we've seen continued sideways trading for Bitcoin on the very short term time frames. This still does not look good. Just today, yesterday, we saw a nice little uptick here. We managed to pump up to 26 and a half. Nothing came of it. Bitcoin captured support again. I'm sorry, captured resistance again and has moved down again. But what we haven't done yet in any substantial way is we have not yet tested the downside. Now, obviously, you guys know the deal. I'm not as perma bearish as everyone else in the space right now. I simply can't. We, we fucking doubled and we're consolidating now. So fuck me. I know I'm just sticking to the books. We're just not that bearish as far as I see. But on this short term time frame, when we're doing these kind of liquidity grabs to the upside right here, right here, right here, you have to expect that we do the same thing to the downside. Does that mean we will? Of course not. But it's certainly possible. It's the exact characteristic that Bitcoin exhibits all the time. And that's why I have to highlight this to you before we continue on in this YouTube video. This does not have to mean something bad. In fact, as you continue to watch this video, you're going to see how this could actually play into something very, very useful for Bitcoin within this trend. If you guys are excited for it, do me a favor and smash up the likes as you come in on this YouTube video and check out the links in the description down below for over $200,000 in bonuses. You've got Bing X here which allows you to trade traditional finance, Tesla, Amazon, Forex, indices, whatever you like, all with Bitcoin. Uh, very, very um, useful exchange at a time like this. There's actually a trade on the S&P 500 that I'm about to set right there on BingX uh, because the S&P 500 is looking spicy right now. And you know that I want to get in on some of that action. It's actually one of the easier assets to trade compared to Bitcoin right now. So that's why it's particularly interesting to me. So go ahead and check that out if you're interested. And of course, the best exchange on the planet, you're getting up to 30K on Bybit uh, when you sign up using my link down below but let's get into the video here and talk about some of the very interesting patterns that we're seeing on bitcoin right now before we dive into ethereum and some of the others a little bit more but here's an interesting pattern that bitcoin has been displaying over these last years we're actually going back now eight years on this chart actually more than that more like 12 i'm sorry i can't do math anymore like nine years now where bitcoin has printed these broadening wedges over the course of in some cases multiple years um and what we've seen is a breakout above the wedge and then a back test which is obviously one of the most typical signs of the market actually being very strong is that the market trends up really nicely slowly trends down whether we form a broadening wedge or a triangle or a falling wedge or whatever you want to call it some sort of continuation some sort of consolidation pattern followed by the breakout right there and the back test. You can actually see that the price spiked way above this broadening wedge, came back down, came for that kiss of life, and then rallied right back up to 20K. Uh, over here, we had a broadening wedge again. This was the COVID crash of March 2020. We had the exact same situation, a broadening wedge, breakout, back test off to the bloody moon same thing potentially playing out right now this is why i actually can't be so scared compared to the other people in the space i feel like i keep repeating myself and that's because the factors don't change i feel like you know everyone's you know just rubber banding between different camps in the bitcoin space right now just bullish bearish bullish bearish bullish bearish if you've been watching me for a while you're gonna know i've been holding on to this same bitcoin long position right here for a very long time now simply because the market just hasn't changed sentiment has changed people have changed their opinions they've changed their trading side and so on and naturally they've lost money because of it but the market hasn't actually changed and if we take a look at this this actually puts things into perspective really nicely for us we've got another broadening wedge it's the same thing that bitcoin has used many times before and we are now coming back down for that back test here's a closer look at what we're actually dealing with here this sideways range right here is roughly that 25 26k area that we're just stuck at right now and if we do end up falling a little bit lower this is going to line up with some really interesting areas of support now we've already covered this on the youtube channel these are areas that we know are important for the market if we go ahead and take a look at this and zoom out just a little bit, uh, we can start to get a really good understanding of this where, you know, Bitcoin has had some pretty decent support at these kind of $23,000, $22,000 areas for quite some time now. And we know that that's been the case because of, you know, just the big retests, the big reversals that have happened at these levels. 21.5, absolutely critical level for the market. 24K, also a critical level for the market. 22.6, you can see all of these reversals just showing up at the same price areas. And what's really interesting is 
is that if we actually do what I'm showing you here in this chart right now, that would fulfill another instance of these broadening wedges actually providing some support for Bitcoin when we get the breakout. So does that mean we're off to, you know, 70K and stuff like that? Of course not. It's way too early to talk about that kind of analysis just now at this particular moment. But what it does mean is that Bitcoin is following in its footsteps that it's followed in before. And as usual, nobody believes it. Nobody is bullish. Nobody is buying it. Nobody is buying it in, in a metaphorical sense and in the literal sense. Nobody's believing it and nobody's actually buying the asset anyway. Um, and meanwhile, we're doing the exact same things that have typically been incredibly bullish for Bitcoin in the past. So again, you know, I try to bring a lot of realism to the market with you guys here on this YouTube channel. If you do appreciate, you know exactly what to do. Uh, and, you know, with that in line here, it, it, it's just not something that's out of the ordinary for Bitcoin. Bitcoin does something bullish. It is bullish. We've doubled from the high and we're consolidating. I'm sorry, we've doubled from the low and we're consolidating. Uh, and now people are losing their minds. So, uh, you know, again, I I'm going to keep on falling down to this until I'm proven wrong. I'm very happy to be proven wrong. I've already made my money on the long position. I'm ready to trade short positions if the market tells me that's what I need to do. But as it stands right now, things are looking pretty decent to me. And here's something else that's interesting. Bitcoin previously actually formed a pattern that looks a little bit like this here, where we set a low and then a slightly lower low and then a very low low. And then we basically formed an inverse head and shoulders. And this is more or less exactly what Bitcoin has done recently since 2022, <coughs> where what we've actually done here is set the same kind of series of lows with that same kind of inverse head and shoulders pattern and then just started to blow up from here. So we've got a few different macro patterns here showing us the same kind of thing, broadly speaking, in this market, which is that we're, we're, we're kind of we're following in the same footsteps that Bitcoin has followed in before. And what gets really exciting is if we actually take a look at how high Bitcoin Bitcoin went from, you know, I mean, back here, by the way, just for a point of reference, this is 14,000, this is 3,000, and this was, of course, 64,000. Uh, you know, from that breakout point, you know, this uh, inverse head and shoulders neckline to the high that we actually set, Bitcoin managed to rise up by 524%. It managed to rise up by 54 $55,000. Now, if we pull off the same dollar gain right now from where we are in this market at 26K, we rise up by $55,000. That does put us at $80,000. Now, again, I'm not saying that this kind of thing is what's going to happen, but if you're interested in how Bitcoin has followed in its footsteps in the path, uh, in, in the past, then this is something that might be worth keeping an eye on. I don't necessarily think this is going to happen. I actually don't think this is going to happen. But I think it's worth looking at charts like this when everyone else is talking about $3,000 because you and I both know that if everyone in the fucking grandmother thinks that Bitcoin's dropping down to 3K, 6K, 9K, 12K, whatever the case may be, it's probably not going to happen. It might. Sometimes the masses are correct. Sometimes 90% of losers that always lose money are correct. But we both know that that's not typically what happens. And of course, that's why I would want to take all of these things with a pinch of salt. Now, I do want to shout out T um, trader Alan right here. Uh, this is actually the account that uh, I've used uh, to to show you this analysis here. He actually put out the same analysis. So go ahead and check him out on Twitter. If you're interested, you can see my Twitter with the link in the description as well. If you want to go ahead and check that out, see the shit post that I'm putting out out there. Uh, very, very fun indeed. Uh, now, obviously, the primary issue that we're facing with this idea is, you know, if I go ahead and take a slightly cleaner chart, we do have, uh, you know, just a, 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 a second, you know, the fact that we've got the second retest is definitely know one of those signs that is potentially indicating a little bit more weakness in the market i mean typically when we did this kind of thing in the past this would be it and then we'd rally off but now we've had to come back down and that's just how it is i mean we are uh we are consolidating at the low and we've got all the body language on this short-term chart to show us that we will be dropping down and that's what i've been telling you guys as well the short-term chart and the long-term chart do tell us different things i know that might be mind-blowing for a lot of people but Welcome to being a trader. That's just how it is. Sometimes the, the time frames are not aligned. In fact, most of the time, the time frames are not aligned. And if you can't recognize that, you're going to lose a lot of money. So it's absolutely critical to be able to identify what the short term trend looks like, what the long term trend looks like, and then, uh, you know, kind of balance out your analysis that way. So I think that is really, really important. And that is one of the main issues that we are facing with this little bit of analysis right here uh, that I have been showing to you guys. And if we go ahead and take a look at Ethereum against Bitcoin as well, this is also very interesting because Ethereum against Bitcoin has uh, has seen a big rally up back in 2021 and then more or less just kept its gains. You can see here uh, that it, it's basically just been sideways with this one big uh, kind of drop down right here. And now we're actually starting to form. There's a butterfly pattern here. I don't know if you guys are interested in that kind of thing, but those of you that look at butterfly patterns, you're going to identify this. Um, you know, and it also is, is kind of playing into a falling wedge here, a 26% falling wedge. And the fact that we've been trading sideways over these last weeks 
guys. I mean, it's, it's been weeks, uh, you know, it, it is, is now showing us that we are starting to open up the possibility of, you know, kind of getting to, towards the end, getting towards the conclusion of this falling wedge. And, you know, what that could indicate is another pump to the upside. If it happens uh, similar to what we saw before, then it would be another 26% pump. And that would put us back at about 0.08 BTC per Ethereum token, which is really interesting because that's exactly where we were topping out before. If we go ahead and take a closer look at the Ethereum Bitcoin chart right here, um, yeah, that works too. That's not the chart I wanted to use though. Let's go ahead and use the other one. Uh, you know, what we can notice very, very clearly is that we have been more or less finding resistance within this band between these two red lines right here. Uh, you know, and if we did get that kind of 26% pump to the upside, uh, you know, depending on where we get that pump from, uh, you know, we would be looking at topping out in a similar range to where we've been encountering some problems in the past over these last couple of years. And, you know, that actually, to me, makes this analysis quite compelling, because if we've got a situation here on this chart where, uh, you know, a, a big breakout would only put us back at the top of the range and not actually it wouldn't actually give us a breakout it wouldn't actually put us on a on a track to you know really you know start breaking highs and you know rallying up beautifully you know when, when it looks like this when it looks boring when it looks like we're going to get a breakout but we're staying in the same range we're still topping out of that glass ceiling that a lot of the times is how you know it's realistic analysis and um and you know i mean again this might be upsetting for you you might be like oh you know 26 percent is nothing but of course if we really take a look at you know what you can do with you know the beauty of leverage in these markets uh you know th this kind of lever this, this kind of this kind of move here is more than enough to make uh you know a very very good amount of money so that definitely does look exciting to me we've been finding support here for quite some time and uh you know i think bottom line if these markets do actually start performing well and obviously the indices markets have been performing spectacularly spectacularly the dollar is now uh i, I think by, uh, by by many many different perspectives the dollar is now quite overextended as well so if we're expecting this to kind of pull back a little bit then perhaps some more sunshine for the crypto markets you know if that's the case then i think it's quite reasonable to say that this kind of uh dry spell that ethereum has been in will be coming to uh some sort of conclusion will be coming to some sort of end uh you know and, and potentially result in you know just a lot of excitement in the space it's been a long time of shit and i think that's why everybody is so negative but obviously like said i mean people are negative at the worst times they're positive at the worst times and that's why we don't want to align with them that's why we're not in bullshit telegram bullshit discord groups or even on crypto twitter uh you know for that because uh you know the more you kind of interact with 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 bad traders which is most traders i i, I can almost guarantee you that you don't interact with good traders because there just aren't that many uh you know the the more you're going to be fed bullshit and the more you're going to be uh you know kind of just uh piggybacking off uh off, off being late basically and, uh, and and i'm here to kind of bring that perspective of hey you know We've been trending down for quite some while, quite some time. We're at a critical area of support. Uh, it's Ethereum against Bitcoin. It's not the dollar chart. It definitely shows me some indications that this thing could be ready to pick up. And these are the signs that I just think people are ignoring right now, which is why I specifically want to be paying a lot more attention to them. If we take a look at Ethereum against the dollar uh, a little bit closer, just on its own native chart right here, uh, you know, we haven't been performing amazingly. We've fallen out of abandoned support right here, which is not ideal. We should be dropping lower, but we haven't quite triggered that fall either. Uh, you know, but bottom line, we have, still been in uh, a falling wedge of sorts i can very roughly draw you know, you know, some rudimentary lines for you here and you can see quite clearly that this is you know one of those setups that could definitely start pointing to the upside again so uh you know well worth keeping in mind here as we continue to go on in this market because again while everybody is getting very very upset we're not actually performing that badly we're not getting big crashes we're just slowly moving down we're slowly correcting we're slowly paying with time we're paying with prices and you know the, the market makes you pay for your euphoria with time-based corrections i.e trading sideways or with price-based corrections i.e trading down Downwards, and we're doing both right now so uh the market is killing us right now the market is hurting us right now uh and of course i i think that uh, you know just kind of relative to the losses we've had i mean for ethereum it's not even that bad right 23 percent in half a fucking year uh you know it, it's just not that you know i mean look at the kind of drops we've had previously i mean this was 54 percent in five days and 23 percent in half a year you know what i mean like people are definitely blowing this whole thing out of perspective meanwhile we're, we're starting to print these bullish patterns so again i want to i want to be you know like comfortable and and fucking, you know, standing in the same circle that everyone else is standing in and agreeing with everybody else because it's just easier on my mental health. But bottom line, I'm here to make money. And of course, to do that, I need to pay attention to the facts much more than the sentiment. And of course, sentiment is interesting to look at because it's usually wrong, uh, of course, for most traders. And, uh, and, and right now, there is a big divergence here. There's a big divergence that I'm seeing where the charts just 
are not looking nearly as bad as everybody is saying uh you know meanwhile we've uh, we've performed fairly well off these lows i mean for ethereum it managed to pull a 2.5x from the low and even up to its current price right now it's still up by 90 percent. so how bearish are we really you know what i mean like i mean you know it, it's it's the bears have apparently been in control for months and what's the worst they could do just make us trade sideways for a couple of weeks you know what i mean like it's just not nearly where i think people are making these things out to be and if we do go ahead and take a look at uh, this Ethereum chart right here, uh, what I want to highlight for you is that you know, we are still, uh, you know, trending down with Ethereum. It is still trending down a little bit more than Bitcoin, uh, you know, but uh, but bottom line, these are the kind of patterns that like within an uptrend, uh, you know, you, you kind of fall down, you, you you form these kind of patterns. This is almost exactly how Bitcoin has uh, pulled off its weird deviation back here. So, we, you know, I mean, I'm just pointing out to you that, you know, we've done this before. This doesn't have to mean alarm bells and, you know, absolutely horrific things are going to be coming, especially at times like now where, you know, I've shown you guys the open interest in one of my use, uh, recent YouTube videos here, open interest is abysmally low in fact the last time the open interest was this low was march of 2013 what am i talking about march of 2023 uh and if we go back to march of 2023 uh that was basically where i entered my long right here so uh you know i mean it, it's, it's absolutely beautiful the way these numbers are working out we have basically reset from a lot of different perspectives while the price is thousands of dollars higher um you know and and with the open interest being this low one of the big things that you and i need to keep in mind at this kind of stage in the market is that moves can be very very manipulated uh you know when you get things that look obviously bearish or obviously bullish they can definitely go the other way and it's a lot less reliable that's actually what makes trading a lot a lot more difficult at a time like this uh you know and that's really important to keep in mind especially if you want to do things like trading on leverage because you'll fucking destroy yourself if you don't pay attention to this kind of thing but uh you know what we do have right now is just one of those instances where rightly i mean the chart is printing some pretty you know potentially nasty signs right here uh but it just doesn't have to be as scary as you think it would be at face value when you consider that actually the market is pulling tons and tons and tons and tons of fake outs and it's almost to the point now where it actually pays to expect them a little bit more you know i was expecting the fake out down here that's why i felt so confident in entering the long position when bitcoin managed to rally up to 21.5 again uh, and of course that was uh, uh you know the, the kind of decision that was able to take me up to some really really nice profit uh numbers earlier in this year so that's looking absolutely beautiful from that perspective if we do go ahead and take a look at the S&P 500, we are now uh, basically at the end of the trading week, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, the trading week is now over. Uh, and we have seen a top out at the 45, 4600 area. We've pulled back a little bit and now we are just kind of consolidating. It's very possible that this turns into one of these kind of patterns where, you know, you just kind of consolidate and then bam, blast off, continue the trend on upwards. The S&P 500 doesn't move particularly, um, uh, it, it moves much more reliably than the crypto markets, but it also, you know, it has the weird, you know, it has weird fake outs it has weird back tests and stuff like that uh you know i mean this is uh you know i mean an index of companies right so it's important to keep in mind that the s p 500 more than most other things that we analyze is based on real world things you know when we're looking at the bitcoin chart the ethereum chart okay we can apply a lot of technicals to it and it works but you know these are real world companies these are subject to you know whatever like a shipping crisis in the suez canal or something is going to affect the s p 500 so it's a little bit harder to analyze from that perspective but bottom line uh you know what i'm seeing here is is quite is quite straightforward it's quite clear we have continued the uptrend beautifully exactly as we predicted on this youtube channel and we are now uh basically consolidating i don't see anything else other than consolidation we've uh, we've fallen down we've risen up uh, and now we're just tightening i mean it, it is the definition by all accounts of what consolidation means uh and of course the fact that we're doing this within an uptrend uh to me is uh it's, it's definitely a nice bright sign here in this index right here so if this does uh you know start tanking downwards this would turn into a dead cat bounce and exit all markets absolutely you know absolute cat uh, catastrophe uh is is, is just going to be around the corner most likely if we uh if we do start breaking down from here it would be very very bad we're probably going to see the dollar rally to massively higher levels but again realistically do we think that's going to happen if we start applying some you know real world knowledge of what's going on with the dollar in the world and so on and so forth uh i don't really see that happening i think that this is a time where actually uh, you know, very interesting. Uh, interestingly, if we go ahead and take a look at oil, um, this is this is important for all of us, actually, especially those of us who are just normal, which is all of us as well. I think, um, you know, th this is this is going to get bad again. Oil is uh, is 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 rallying up. This is. Uh, probably the effect of the United States pissing off the Middle East a lot over the last few months and uh, and, and obviously oil um, uh, production being cut down. So, uh, you know, naturally that's going to lead to higher prices in oil. Uh, and as we know by now, if you've been subscribed to this YouTube channel for some time, 
uh, you know, when uh, when oil does shoot up, uh, that is typically going to have some knock on effects on, you know, the cost of shipping goods, the cost of everything really goes up. Uh, and, and of course, that's that's what we call inflation. So, uh, you know, with oil starting to take another rally up, inflation potentially being around the corner, more money printing and so on and so forth. Uh, you know, I definitely think that, um, you know, these these indices, while everybody is shit scared, is, are, are, are just, uh, you know, just just ready to continue to rally up. Honestly, the more I say it, the more I grow convinced of this idea, because uh, it feels like everywhere I go, everyone's got these bearish narratives right now. And, uh, you know, I'm, I'm just not seeing the charts show that show that same thing to me. I want to be clear, this doesn't mean that you're necessarily going to make money, right? Like if there's more inflation and then the markets go up, you know, you might have more dollars in your account, but your dollars are weaker. So don't don't get excited either. Uh, you know, it, it's shit for us too. Uh, you know, it does mean that we're losing purchasing power and we need to work and scramble to make more money in order to, uh, you know, kind of earn that back basically. Uh, you know, but, uh, but bottom line, at least we know what's going on and uh, knowing what's going on is the first step in protecting yourself from, uh, you know, losing purchasing power from your money getting weaker. And of course, it's also the first step in making money as well. So, uh, you know, if this thing continues to consolidate over the next week, then that's just beautiful for me. I think, uh, you know, just really into, you know, across September, uh, you know, if it just kind of cools off a little bit, we have a nice bullish October, November, that to me would make a lot of sense. I think for Bitcoin, uh, it's also poised to do something similar. I think if the dollar starts to retrace down a little bit more, uh, you know, then that's going to put Bitcoin potentially in a really nice position where we can actually leave this range and then start getting a little bit higher. Uh, you know, I mean, bearing in mind that this is a sideways range. So and naturally, I mean, you know, we've now tested out the downside pretty clearly. Uh, maybe it's time to start testing the upside across, you know, the next month or two. Uh, it's certainly possible. Definitely not something that I want you to uh, to ignore the possibility of, um, you know, because we are still, uh, as far as I can see, in a sideways range. And of course, I think, you know, these kind of sideways ranges, uh, they do need to be respected they do need to be taken seriously they play out way more often than uh whatever staircase to hell or or staircase to heaven that most people think we're actually seeing uh you know it, it's usually just these kind of sideways ranges that prevail in the market so that's also important to be keeping in mind. Uh, but with that, guys, I am going to be heading off. It was a relatively quick one right here on this YouTube channel today. There's still not a whole lot going on. If you have any particular things that you want me to look in uh, specifically, then let me know with the comment section down below. Uh, if you have enjoyed this one, you know exactly what to do. Hit up the likes, subscribe, tick the bell, do all that good stuff. Take advantage of the beautiful offers available to you with the links in the description down below. And I'll see you all in the next one. Cheers.